To NL Sports Center, we go for our 2022 college football predictions for the Kentucky Wildcats, one of the top teams in the SEC in the 2021 season, as this team went 10 and 3 overall. Good season for this team. But how will they be in 2022? Will this team be even better in the 2022 season? That's what we go over here today. We'll be analyzing this team, breaking their schedule game by game in this video, starting out with your team trends. Kentucky 10 and 3 last season. I mean, this team, I expected them to be good last season, but getting up to 10 wins was certainly a great accomplishment for the Wildcats. They were 6-0 in their first six games. They were undefeated for a while. Um, they ended up losing three of their last seven, but of course they played several uh, tough games within that stretch. Beat Missouri 35-28. to They also beat Florida, who is the number 10 team in the nation. At the time, they're 20-13. They beat LSU uh, by three touchdowns, 42-21. Lost to Georgia. That was a huge game there. I mean, Kentucky going in um, as an undefeated team and facing off against Georgia, the number one team in the nation. Uh, ended up losing that game 13-30. to But, I mean, in the end, Georgia eventually was the national champion of the season. And, um, I mean, either way, I mean, for Kentucky, uh, moving forward, they still had a great season. They beat Louisville 52-21 to um, in the last game of the regular season and then beat Iowa. And their bowl game 20 to 17, which was a huge win. Iowa was a good team last season, made it to the Big Ten title game. So uh, that was a great win to finish out the season there. So 10 and 3 was the record for this team last season. Raj P going into next season. This team does return uh, several of their key players from last season, which is definitely going to be huge. I mean, you got Will Levis coming back, the starting quarterback from last season. He put up 2,800 yards, 24 touchdowns, 13 picks, and a 66% completion rate. I mean, Levis going into the 2021 season, we didn't know much at all about him. So, I mean, the quarterback situation was definitely a question mark going into 2021. I think I predicted this team to uh, to, to be a 7 or 8 win team. But, I mean, obviously the quarterback situation was a huge question mark. And so, uh, it was it's tough to tell whether or not this team could uh, be above that 7 or 8 win mark or below it. Uh, but Levis overall, I mean, he was a bit inconsistent at times, but still... Not a bad season for him, and he definitely shows potential moving into the future. He also had uh, 390 yards of rushing and nine rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, he was uh, he was excellent on the on the ground last season as well. Uh, the backfield looks great. You got Chris Rodriguez coming back. Last season, he put up over 1,400 yards of offense and 13 touchdowns. He is a player to keep an eye on going into next season. He's, I mean, he is an incredibly. Um, underrated if you ask me no one's really talking about Chris Rodriguez but I mean he, he could be one of the best running backs in the SEC maybe even one of the best in the nation going into next season at this rate you also got smoke coming back the second running back so the depth looks really good in the backfield going into next season smoke put up 400 yards of offense and four touchdowns last season I mean in the receiving core though you do lose a couple of key players Wandale Robinson the top uh, receiver for this team he was the transfer from Nebraska going in um, excellent season, 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns. He had a very good season for the Wildcats. That's going to be a tough loss there. Uh, you also lose your second receiver in Josh Alley, who put up uh, 600 yards of offense and four touchdowns. So the receiving core is a bit of a question mark going into next season. You do have some good depth there. Uh, Demarcus Harris is coming back, who put up only 150 yards last season. He was the third receiver on this team. Um, so, I mean, they're, the receiving core... I mean, there's a couple question marks in the depth, though. I mean, it's pretty good. There's still uh, some good depth, even though they, they kind of lack a standout player um, in the receiving core going into next season. But we'll see how that um, ages and how they do there. Um, and on the offensive line, they lose three there. They lose two defensive linemen, then two in the secondary. So defensively, not too many losses there either. The O-line uh, does lose three. But... I mean, in general, the returning production is good for this team. You got your starting quarterback coming back. To, I mean, the backfield looks really good going into next season. I think that's going to be a huge factor for this team. I mean, this offense is going to be on the ground a lot next season, I really do believe. When you got Chris Rodriguez, uh, the, the depth there in the backfield, plus, I mean, Will Levis isn't a terrible rusher either. I mean, this team looks, I would say, I mean, they got some big potential on offense. Uh, it brings up the questions, is this team a potential SEC dark horse going to next season? They sure were going into 2021. They didn't get much. I mean, they weren't talked about too much going into 2021, but I mean, this team potentially is an SEC dark horse. I mean, the SEC East, you got, I mean, obviously Georgia, who is who is the clear uh, favorite to win that division going to next season. I mean, you got uh, Florida, who looks to be going into a rebuild here going to next season. You got South Carolina, who's 
Um, also a potential dark horse, Spencer Rattler, of course, going in, but he's just one player in a team that's had some troubles over the past few years. And then Tennessee, of course. Tennessee's looking pretty good as well. But, I mean, in the end, Georgia is the clear and obvious favorite to win the SEC East going into next season. But I think this team could cause some noise, uh, win a couple of games they weren't expected to, and uh, have a good season there. But I think, the, I think the ceiling is, in general, fairly high for this team. I think Kentucky, in general, I mean, this team, I mean, last season they got up to 10 wins. I mean, the, the ceiling is pretty high for this team going into next year. Transfer portal and recruiting going into next season. You do lose several players in the transfer portal. You bring in a couple. Uh, you got Tavion Robinson coming in from Virginia Tech, receiver, so that's going to be huge. Uh, but And you also uh, bring in Smith, defensive back from Ole Miss. You lose Dort, who is a defensive back uh, going to Wisconsin. Isaiah Epps, receivers in the transfer portal. Moses Douglas, a defensive back, is in the transfer portal. Isaiah Gibson, defensive lineman, is off to Marshall. KD McDaniel. Linebackers off to UCF and another linebacker, uh, Jared Casey, is off to Indiana. Recruiting wise, 14th in the nation, 5th in the SEC. So recruiting is actually really good for this team going to next season. Obviously, the SEC is superior when it comes to recruiting, uh, considering Kentucky is ranked 5th in the SEC and 14th in the nation. You got 10 four stars coming in, 10 three stars overall. Looks really good going to next season. But that said, let's look at your schedule now going into next season. This team obviously has got, I mean, it's. It's a schedule that is manageable. I mean, you don't really, you don't have to play Alabama or Texas A&M um, from the SEC West. That does, that does make a difference there. I mean, you don't even have to play Arkansas, which I mean, Arkansas is also a team who's expected to be towards the top of the SEC West next season. So, I mean, this this schedule isn't terrible. I mean, if you look at many of the SEC schedules, this is probably one of the easier ones. And of course, you got Miami Ohio to start off the season there. That's a home game. Then you travel to Florida on September 10th. You got Youngstown State at home on the 17th, Northern Illinois to follow. You got Ole Miss on the road to start for your October, South Carolina at home, Mississippi State at home. And then you got your bye week and then Tennessee on the road. Missouri on the road, Vanderbilt at home, then Georgia at home, and then Louisville also at home to finish out the season. So you got your last three games of the regular season at home. And you also, I mean, in week two, you do have a road game in, in a conference matchup. But I mean, once again, I don't expect Florida to be terribly good next season. But looking at September here, Miami, Ohio, easy win there. Not concerned about that game. Florida on the road. Um, Florida is a tough place to play, but I feel like the Gators next season, I mean, last year they, were, they weren't very good. And, I mean, now going into 2022, new coaching situation and obviously um, a fairly young team. I think Florida is going to be in a rebuilding phase going into next season. So, I will project a win there for Kentucky, although it will be a close one. Youngstown State, Northern Illinois, both easy wins. So I think 4-0 is uh, extremely likely for the, for the Wildcats going into next season. I mean, even if you do lose that Florida game, I mean, you should go 3-1. If you're not at least 3-1, uh, that is concerning. But looking at October there, you got Ole Miss on the road. I am going to favor the Rebels in that matchup. Ole Miss is a team that, I mean, they lose Matt Corral. He was a huge part of the team last season, but they bring in... Of course, uh, Jackson Dart from USC, who was a five-star out of high school, and he definitely shows major potential. So Ole Miss could still be good next season. I don't know if they're going to be in a New Year's Six Bowl game again, but, I mean, Ole Miss could be good. So going on the road there, I will favor the Rebels there. South Carolina and Mississippi State, both close games, but I will favor Kentucky in both of them. October is obviously your toughest month. I mean, you got South Carolina and Mississippi State. Both teams uh, should be decent next season. I could see both those teams in the six to eight, maybe nine win range. Um, uh, yeah, I'd say six to eight, but I mean, either way, both teams are still good. Got Tennessee on the road on the 29th. I will favor the Vols in that matchup. Um, Tennessee next season, I could see them seven to nine wins potentially. Uh, they look pretty good. I do think Tennessee is going to be, they'll cause some noise in the SEC next season. And with that being a tougher place to play, I will favor Kentucky or Tennessee in that matchup. So you're six and two heading into November, which is not a terrible record. I mean, October is once again, a fairly tough month for this team. And in November, you got Missouri on the road. All favor Kentucky there. Missouri not expecting too much out of them. Uh, Vanderbilt, easy win. I mean, they're the bottom feeder of the SEC. And then you got George on the 19th. I will favor the Bulldogs there once again. I think honestly, the SEC could very well produce two undefeated teams in the regular season next year. Alabama, I could definitely see them going 12-0 and in Georgia as well. I mean, they won the national title last season, but they're returning a lot of their key players, and the depth on this on that team is excellent. So I could see them going 12-0 as well. 
and I do I do think that Georgia wins that game. Uh, Louisville at home, I do want to favor Kentucky there. I mean, Louisville is, they might be a decent team in the ACC, but when it comes down to it, Kentucky is the better team. So I'll favor uh, Kentucky there by a couple of touchdowns. So record prediction, 9-3 for this team. 9-3 is not a bad record. I mean, I feel like this, this team, they should... Uh, I think nine wins is extremely manageable, especially the schedule. Once again, it's not a terrible schedule in comparison. I mean, if you look at their crossover games in the SEC West, I mean, you don't have to play Alabama, Arkansas, or Texas A&M, my top three teams projected for the division next season. So, I mean, that is certainly something to consider. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Wildcats. And I appreciate you guys all watching. As always, stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you on the next one.